Day 126. 1 Kings 21 to 22. Some time later, Naboth the Jezreelite happened to own a vineyard in Jezreel next to the palace of Ahab king of Samaria. So Ahab said to Naboth, Give me your vineyard to use as a vegetable garden, since it is next to my palace. I will give you a better vineyard in its place, or if you prefer, I will give you its value in silver. But Naboth replied, The Lord forbid that I should give you the inheritance of my fathers. So Ahab went to his palace, sullen and angry because Naboth the Jezreelite had told him. I will not give you the inheritance of my fathers. He lay down on his bed, turned his face away, and refused to eat. Soon his wife Jezebel came in and asked, Why are you so sullen that you refuse to eat? Ahab answered, Because I spoke to Naboth the Jezreelite and told him, Give me your vineyard for silver, or if you wish, I will give you another vineyard in its place. And he replied, I will not give you my vineyard. But his wife Jezebel said to him, Do you not reign over Israel? Get up, eat some food, and be cheerful, for I will get you the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. Then Jezebel wrote letters in Ahab's name, sealed them with his seal, and sent them to the elders and nobles who lived with Naboth in his city. In the letters she wrote, Proclaim a fast and give Naboth a seat of honor among the people. But see two scoundrels opposite him and have them testify, You have cursed both God and the king. Then take him out and stone him to death. So the elders and nobles who lived in Naboth's city did as Jezebel had instructed in the letters she had written to them. They proclaimed a fast and gave Naboth a seat of honor among the people. And the two scoundrels came in and sat opposite Naboth, and these men testified against him before the people, saying, Naboth has cursed both God and the king. So they took him outside the city and stoned him to death. Then they sent word to Jezebel, Naboth has been stoned to death. When Jezebel heard that Naboth had been stoned to death, she said to Ahab, Get up and take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, who refused to give it to you for silver. For Naboth is no longer alive, but dead. And when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, he got up and went down to take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Get up and go down to meet Ahab king of Israel, who is in Samaria. See, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, of which he has gone to take possession. Tell him that this is what the Lord says, Have you not murdered a man and seized his land? Then tell him that this is also what the Lord says, In the place where the dogs licked up the blood of Naboth, there also the dogs will lick up your blood, yes, yours. When Elijah arrived, Ahab said to him, So you have found me out, my enemy. He replied, I have found you out because you have sold yourself to do evil in the sight of the Lord. This is what the Lord says, I will bring calamity on you and consume your descendants, I will cut off from Ahab every male in Israel, both slave and free. I will make your house like that of Jeroboam son of Nebat and like that of Basha son of Ahijah. Because you have provoked my anger and caused Israel to sin. And the Lord also speaks concerning Jezebel, the dogs will devour Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Anyone belonging to Ahab who dies in the city will be eaten by dogs. And anyone who dies in the field will be eaten by the birds of the air. Surely there was never one like Ahab, who sold himself to do evil in the sight of the Lord, incited by his wife Jezebel. He committed the most detestable acts by going after idols, just like the Amorites whom the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. When Ahab heard these words, he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and fasted. He lay down in sackcloth and walked around meekly. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Have you seen how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the calamity during his days, but I will bring it upon his house in the days of his son. Then three years passed without war between Aram and Israel. However, in the third year, Jehoshaphat king of Judah went down to visit the king of Israel, who said to his servants, Do you not know that Ramoth Gilead is ours, but we have failed to take it from the hand of the king of Aram? So he asked Jehoshaphat, Will you go with me to fight against Ramoth Gilead? Jehoshaphat answered the king of Israel, I am like you, my people are your people, and my horses are your horses. But Jehoshaphat also said to the king of Israel, Please inquire first for the word of the Lord. So the king of Israel assembled the prophets, about four hundred men, and asked them, Should I go to war against Ramoth Gilead, or should I refrain? Go up, they replied, and the Lord will deliver it into the hand of the king. But Jehoshaphat asked, is there not still a prophet of the Lord here of whom we can inquire? The king of Israel answered, 
there is still one man who can ask the Lord, but I hate him because he never prophesies anything good for me, but only bad. He is Micaiah son of Imla. The king should not say that. Jehoshaphat replied. So the king of Israel called one of his officials and said, Bring Micaiah son of Imla at once. Dressed in royal attire, the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat king of Judah were sitting on their thrones at the threshing floor by the entrance of the gate of Samaria. With all the prophets prophesying before them. Now Zedekiah son of Chinana had made for himself iron horns and declared, This is what the Lord says, With these you shall gore the Arameans until they are finished off. And all the prophets were prophesying the same, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper. For the Lord will deliver it into the hand of the king. Then the messenger who had gone to call Micaiah instructed him, Behold now, with one accord the words of the prophets are favorable to the king. So please let your words be like theirs, and speak favorably. But Micaiah said, As surely as the Lord lives, I will speak whatever the Lord tells me. When Micaiah arrived, the king asked him, Micaiah, should we go to war against Ramoth Gilead, or should we refrain? Go up and triumph, Micaiah replied, for the Lord will give it into the hand of the king. But the king said to him, How many times must I make you swear not to tell me anything but the truth in the name of the Lord? So Micaiah declared, I saw all Israel scattered on the hills like sheep without a shepherd. And the Lord said, These people have no master, let each one return home in peace. Then the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you that he never prophesies good for me, but only bad? Micaiah continued, Therefore hear the word of the Lord, I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right and on his left. And the Lord said, Who will entice Ahab to march up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one suggested this, and another that. Then a spirit came forward, stood before the Lord, and said, I will entice him. By what means? Asked the Lord. And he replied, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouths of all his prophets. You will surely entice him and prevail, said the Lord. Go and do it. So you see, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouths of all these prophets of yours, and the Lord has pronounced disaster against you. Then Zedekiah son of Chinana went up, struck Micaiah in the face, and demanded. Which way did the spirit of the Lord go when he departed from me to speak with you? Micaiah replied, You will soon see, on that day when you go and hide in an inner room. And the king of Israel declared, Take Micaiah and return him to Ammon the governor of the city and to Joash the king's son. And tell them that this is what the king says, Put this man in prison and feed him only bread and water until I return safely. But Micaiah replied, If you ever return safely, the Lord has not spoken through me. Then he added, Take heed, all you people. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat king of Judah went up to Ramoth Gilead. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and go into battle, but you wear your royal robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself and went into battle. Now the king of Aram had ordered his thirty-two chariot commanders, Do not fight with anyone, small or great, except the king of Israel. When the chariot commanders saw Jehoshaphat, they said, Surely this is the king of Israel. So they turned to fight against him, but Jehoshaphat cried out. And when the chariot commanders saw that he was not the king of Israel, they turned back from pursuing him. However, a certain man drew his bow without taking special aim, and he struck the king of Israel between the joints of his armor. So the king said to his charioteer, Turn around and take me out of the battle, for I am badly wounded. The battle raged throughout that day, and the king was propped up in his chariot facing the Arameans. And the blood from his wound ran out onto the floor of the chariot, and that evening he died. As the sun was setting, the cry rang out in the army, Every man to his own city, and every man to his own land. So the king died and was brought to Samaria, where they buried him. And the chariot was washed at the pool of Samaria where the prostitutes bathed, and the dogs licked up Ahab's blood, according to the word that the Lord had spoken. As for the rest of the acts of Ahab, along with all his accomplishments and the ivory palace and all the cities he built, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Ahab rested with his fathers, and his son Ahaziah reigned in his place. In the fourth year of Ahab's reign over Israel, Jehoshaphat son of Asa became king of Judah. Jehoshaphat was thirty-five years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem twenty-five years. His mother's name was Ajaba daughter of Shilhai. And Jehoshaphat walked in all the ways of his father Asa, he did not turn away from them, but did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. 
The high places, however, were not removed, the people still sacrificed and burned incense on the high places. Jehoshaphat also made peace with the king of Israel. As for the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat, along with the might he exercised and how he waged war, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? He banished from the land the male shrine prostitutes who remained from the days of his father Asa. And there was no king in Edom, a deputy served as king. Jehoshaphat built ships of Tarshish to go to Ophir for gold, but they never set sail, because they were wrecked at Ezi and Jeber. At that time Ahaziah son of Ahab said to Jehoshaphat, Let my servants sail with your servants, but Jehoshaphat refused. And Jehoshaphat rested with his fathers and was buried with them in the city of his father David. And his son Jehoram reigned in his place. In the seventeenth year of Jehoshaphat's reign over Judah, Ahaziah son of Ahab became king of Israel, and he reigned in Samaria two years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the ways of his father and mother and of Jeroboam son of Nebat, who had caused Israel to sin. Ahaziah served and worshipped Baal, provoking the Lord, the God of Israel, to anger, just as his father had done. Luke 23 verses 26-56 As the soldiers led him away, they seized Simon of Cyrene on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him to carry behind Jesus. A great number of people followed him, including women who kept mourning and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Look, the days are coming when people will say, Blessed are the barren women, the wombs that never bore, and breasts that never nursed. At that time they will say to the mountains, Fall on us. And to the hills, Cover us. For if men do these things while the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others, who were criminals, were also led away to be executed with Jesus. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his garments by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the ruler sneered at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers also mocked him and came up to offer him sour wine. If you are the king of the Jews, they said, save yourself. Above him was posted an inscription, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there heaped abuse on him. Are you not the Christ? He said. Save yourself and us. But the other one rebuked him, saying, do you not even fear God, since you are under the same judgment? We are punished justly, for we are receiving what our actions deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over all the land until the ninth hour. The sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn down the middle. Then Jesus called out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had happened, he gave glory to God, saying, Surely this was a righteous man. And when all the people who had gathered for the spectacle saw what had happened, they returned home beating their breasts. But all those who knew Jesus, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a council member named Joseph, a good and righteous man, who had not consented to their decision or action. He was from the Judean town of Arimathea, and was waiting for the kingdom of God. He went to Pilate to ask for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb cut into the rock, where no one had yet been laid. It was preparation day, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was placed. Then they returned to prepare spices and perfumes. And they rested on the Sabbath, according to the commandment.